Hello, and welcome to my EdTech ePortfolio. My name is Carrie Christensen, and I am a student enrolled in the Masters of Educational Technology program at Boise State University. My passion in teaching has always focused on integrating technology across all areas of the curriculum. This desire to become more familiar with educational technology is what brought me to Boise State. I have found that students who use technology are more engaged, which leads to less behavior problems within the classroom. I have also found that they perform significantly better on assessments when compared to students who are learning in a traditional classroom. The following video is a reflection of three important artifacts that I have created during my time enrolled in the master's program, and I have also had the opportunity to use them with my fifth grade students. The three projects are the EdTech 542 Alaskan Gold Rush Unit, the EdTech 506 Oregon Trail Unit, and the EdTech 502 Civil War WebQuest. These three projects are ones that I have had the most success with in my class based on student and parent input. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the video. The Alaskan Gold Rush Unit was created this summer while I was enrolled in EdTech 542. EdTech 542 taught me how to create a lesson using the project-based learning format. Project-based learning provides students with the opportunity to learn about an aspect of the curriculum by answering a complex question provided by the teacher. Students learn the answer to the questions by researching on the internet and completing formative and summative assessments. I have taught the Alaskan Gold Rush curriculum for the past seven years with the fifth graders in my class. The difficulty has always been there was no teacher material provided to use with the students. What I would do is create worksheets and have the students find the answers using reference material on the internet. It would turn boring pretty quickly. In developing this unit, I decided that I needed to make sure it was engaging, exciting, and written at a level that students of all ability levels could succeed. The unit creation started with first developing the question that would guide students throughout the unit. Then I designed the summative assessment. I decided that this assessment would be a small group Google Docs PowerPoint presentation. Google Docs is a program that the Anchorage School District has been encouraging teachers to use more regularly with their students. All students in the district now have their own account and can log in to work on their classroom assignments at school as well as at home. Most of my students are unfamiliar with this program and since I have been told by 6th grade teachers this is a tool they will use regularly. I wanted to make sure my students were able to work with and become familiar with it this school year. In developing the summative assessment, I researched the standards they would meet at the conclusion of their work and created the rubrics that the students and myself would complete to determine how well they performed. After developing the summative assessment, I began developing the formative assessments. Con these assessments consisted of standard pencil and paper assignments and ones that were computer based. The first standard pencil and paper assessment is a social studies journal that students will use each day to reflect on their learning. Students will also complete four different rubrics to reflect on their individual and group's performance several times throughout the project. In the past I have used rubrics but I have had difficulty with students who were not honest about their performance and would give themselves a higher grade than they deserved. Within this unit, I added a component where I would add direct instruction on how to fill out a rubric and why it was important to complete it honestly. When I used this lesson with my students this September, I made sure that I had at least three direct lessons on how to complete the rubrics. I found that 90 to 95 percent of the students were very honest on their performance. In previous years, the highest percentage had been 75 percent. This was a vast improvement. The technologically based assessments were also a vital component of the unit. The first technologically based assessment is an Edmodo blog. This was an important aspect to bring into this project because much like Google Docs, the Anchorage School District has created an Edmodo account for all of the students. Students are being required in several language arts classes to use blogs to reflect, so I wanted to give students the opportunity to learn how to use Edmodo for posting and responding. Students are also going to post websites that they find helpful for researching the Alaskan Gold Rush on a Class Digo page. A Class Digo page provides a way to help keep important resources organized, as well as helping speed up the research process since students have all of their websites in one central location. location. At the conclusion of the project, the students presented their projects to, one, to their classmates and parents. While I have done presentations before, I added a new component to the presentation this year that was the parent questionnaire. 
I was somewhat reluctant to use this product because I wasn't sure how the parents would respond to having homework from the teacher, but 100% of my, my parents responded. They offered great suggestions for improving the project, as well as which components I should keep for the following school years. This project was a great experience for me. The students were engaged and I enjoyed going through the project with them. This will definitely be one I will use again next year. Spring semester 2012, I participated in the course EdTech 506 Graphic Design for Learning. This course gave me the opportunity to use Dreamweaver and Firefox to create images on websites that are effective at conveying messages to students and will not impede their learning. The final project for EdTech 506 was the creation of a unit of study. The unit of study that I created was on the Oregon Trail. The images that I created for this unit were all based on the principles of graphic design. Following these principles, I created images that students could use as they complete the unit. The images, since they were created following the design principles, do not have any added components that can distract students from getting the main message of the image on each web page. The first tab that students use after the home page is the map page. I created this image to prevent my students from becoming confused about all of the trails that often appear on other maps that are used with the Oregon Trail unit. The three trails on this map, the California Mormon and Oregon Trails, are the primary focus of the trail study by the fifth graders in my class. This map was vital for me to create because it focuses just on the trails the students will study the states that the trails go through, and the trails are color-coded to make them easy to determine where they begin and end. The next page students will use is the journal page. This page has a detailed explanation of how students will create and maintain their journal. The image behind keeps the students focused on the fact that they are working on a journal. Maintaining the directions for completing the daily journal entries online also prevents students from losing them and not knowing my expectations. The next image students will use is under the tab Image. When I have used this assessment in the past, students have struggled with completing all components of the assignment. They would skip over step four and constantly go back to their cubby to get more materials to complete their project. This back and forth was distracting for the students. By having all of the steps in descending order with the numbers in a big arrow, students are able to see the directions that they need to complete the items. It also has cut down on students missing steps and not completing the, the image in a timely manner. The Conestoga wagon image, much like the map image, was created to fulfill a need that I have experienced with this unit in the past. Students have difficulty visualizing how big a Conestoga wagon is and how many necessary parts there were on the wagon. This was the main mode of transportation along the trail and people brought everything they needed to survive in it. In looking at images on the internet, I could find images of the wagon, small ones that had some parts labeled, or some that had way too many parts labeled. I decided to create an image that had parts of the wagon that were important to the fifth graders curriculum and that was easy for them to see the inside and outside of the wagon. This image is exactly what was needed to address my concerns. The supplies image is used in conjunction with the Conestoga wagon. Students see the image of the wagon and then look at the pyramid to see the major supplies that were brought in the wagons with the items that had the most brought in the wagons at the bottom and the items that had the least amount brought in the wagons located at the top. In talking about the items brought along the trail, students often think that they could bring everything that they wanted to. Students did not understand that important items were left behind because they did not help with survival. Students used the pyramid image to create their own pyramid and to put in order the items that they would bring with them if they traveled the Oregon Trail today. This activity puts the whole idea of having to travel in a wagon for months in perspective for today's students. The checklist image is used to help students stay organized as they complete all of the assessments for the unit. Since there are so many requirements, students can get lost and forget what they have completed and what they still need to complete. With requiring the students to turn in the checklist to me throughout the unit, I can make sure that students are staying focused on the tasks they need to complete. Since this checklist is online, it is easy for the students and me to communicate on how well they are doing on the assignments. The final tab is the iMovie tab. This image details the directions for creating the final assessment for this unit. An iMovie can be a difficult and complicated program for students to use. The detailed directions contained in this image use arrows and movement from top to bottom to help students stay organized. Describing each necessary step makes the final project less overwhelming for students as they learn the iMovie program. 
EdTech 506 was a great course and it has changed the way that I create images for web pages as well as hard copy handouts. This final artifact was one that took me the most time to complete as well as the one that gave me the most trouble. I struggled with the links throughout the web quest. There were times that the links wouldn't work and then other times when they would. When this project was completed, I was so proud of myself. I have used this web quest with my students as well as shared it with the other fifth grade teachers in my school. Last year, 65 students completed this Civil War web quest. I was very excited. Not only because my colleagues decided to use my web quest out of all of the other examples, but because there were no technical issues and the students were very engaged. The benefit that I noticed from using a web quest as opposed to the standard method of instruction was the web quest has the students become a part of the adventure. On the task page, the directions state that the students are approached by the president and asked to create a section of a textbook that is non-biased. In reading through the task page, the section on biasness caused a big classroom conversation with my students. They were shocked that textbooks, or books that were written on history, could involve bias. We talked about how a textbook could be written in a non-biased manner. This discussion led to some of the best textbook entries that I have ever seen. They put a lot of thought into what they were writing and took pride when they shared their entries with each other. The process section of the web quest was very helpful for the students and teachers. The links were there to help students easily find all places they could look for images and information as well as how to cite the different resources that they would use in their textbook entry. Adding the evaluation component to the web quest made it easy for the students to refer to as they completed their textbook entry. I have decided that the next time I use the web quest I'm going to add a link that the students can click on to download a PDF version of the rubric. When we used it last year, the students printed off the web page and filled it out. While it wasn't a big distraction to have the links on the side, the teachers and I both said we would prefer for it to be just the rubric and not any unneeded information. In creating the rubric, I spent a lot of time making sure that the rubric was written at a fifth grade level and that the items the students were evaluated on were important for becoming proficient on the standards. The students are assessed on demonstrating their knowledge of the Civil War, writing for informational purposes, and finding images that support the textbook entry. In having students use a rubric, teachers need to make sure that students understand how to fill it out and why it is important to grade themselves honestly. In using a rubric for this project, I did talk with the students about how to use the rubric, but I did not spend enough time discussing with them the importance of being honest. This unit was what changed how I taught students about rubrics with the Alaskan Gold Rush unit mentioned earlier in this video. When I use this web quest again, I will make sure that direct instruction on how to use a rubric is a component. In looking at the teacher page, I have often wondered if I should have included more standards. This Alas the Alaskan Gold Rush unit discussed all of the standards that were covered, but this one mentions three. After using this unit with my students, I realized that I could have included several more from history, writing, reading, and the ISTE standards. While the importance of the web quest was not to worry about every single standard addressed, now with my school's movement toward the Common Core standards and being at a school that has not made adequate yearly progress in three years, I have to justify projects that I use outside of the adopted curriculum more often. While using a project that has three standards addressed is very good, I think that administrators and parents would be even more impressed if I mentioned how many standards this les lesson actually does address. With the movement towards integrating technology into the curriculum, I still find that there are often those that feel that the best way to instruct students is with the Back to Basics method, which uses a textbook and pencil and paper assessments. After having taught that way before, I can truly say that standard textbook and pencil and paper assessments did not meet as many standards as this unit did. Common Core standards have added technology into the concepts that students need to become proficient on. Moving towards more technology and education is what we need to do to ensure that our students become proficient in all areas of the standards.